I'm drawn to quilt fabrics with large designs. Just when I think I'll include them in my next quilt, oh, I shy away from cutting into them, fearful that I'll destroy the design. Then I met today's guest, Tula Pink, who showcases her quilt designs with large prints. Welcome back to Sewing with Nancy Tula, and you've taken the fear out of cutting into those big prints. Well, thanks so much for having me, Nancy. Uh -huh. And I think everybody's afraid of cutting into those large prints. My quilt pattern stacks will give you the confidence to work with large scale prints, modeled after the things in life that get piled up, books, parking tickets, and elusive socks. This quilt design makes a little beauty out of the chaos and turns the ordinary into the extraordinary. Quilts from the House of Tula Pink, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. When I first met Tula, the term that stuck in my mind is, she said, I create quilts that are organic, but they have intention. And your Stax quilt is organic, free-flowing, but it has specific order. Yeah, that's probably the epitome of that statement uh -huh. is in this quilt here. Um, we're dealing with a pretty standard block structure, but the way it's pieced together, it disappears within the quilt. You have no idea that it's a block, a big one. A big block. Here, this is one of the blocks in a different fabric coloration, and it has five different rows, and all of these blocks have been made of these same five rows, different mm -hmm. colorations, different order. Yeah, and by re changing up the order, you mm -hmm. completely change the look of the block, but it still finishes to be an 18-inch block every time. And you get a, somewhat of a column look. You do. Uh-huh. You do. And that's why the quilt's called Stacks, so that it's, it's like Stacks of Stuff. <laughs> and we all have stuff. So we do. Stuff. <laughs> stuff. Stuff. Yes. And we can certainly can appreciate that. You're going to be cutting many prints that coordinate. You all you need is a fat quarter, remember, 18 by 22, those funny cuts, or a quarter of a yard. Mm -hmm. and Either will work. Either will work. And that's what I like about this design. And these are what we have cut here are the sizes. Right. So this is what you would cut from each quarter yard. We're going to start with a three and a half inch square and then there's a narrow strip two and a half by nine and a half, two and a half by eighteen and a half, six and a half by ten and a half, and three and a half by twelve and a half. And if you didn't copy those down quickly, you'll find in the book that accompanies today's program. But that by itself wouldn't be that interesting. Right. Right, and so by cutting these from every piece of fabric that makes up the quilt, you'll end up with a variety of fabrics all in those pieces which you can mix and match into each block. Of the squares, you'll, you'll need four, two of each color, and then you just choose from the stacks until you have the grouping. So one right. of each of the fabrics, and we kept this one as you can see. Now these two squares, turn into the pinwheel. Correct. And yeah. the pinwheel just adds a little bit of that traditional flavor to an otherwise really modern quilt. Uh-huh. And here we have the, uh, I think some of you have done pinwheels before. You meet the opposing colors together, meeting the right, si right sides together. Mm -hmm. And we've marked down the center and stitched a fourth of an inch from the yeah. center. And then just by simply cutting that in half, half of your pinwheel is essentially already made. So we just open it up, do a little finger press, and here we have some pinwheels that are starting to look like pinwheels. And here we have three, four. I think I have this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I have it really wrong. 
Oh, yeah. When I'm making pinwheels, that's always the oh. hardest part is to figure out the combination. Sure. So I visually just am turning yeah, turn. them okay. just like a pinwheel. And because I did it wrong, let's show the right one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's the easiest part. So we have a very traditional quilt block. And now you're going to make tubes. This is this is very brilliant. <laughs> uh, if I'm I, When I first read Tula's book and I had a conversation with her, I thought, this is clever. So now you cut a, a background fabric. Great. And so the idea of these of these tubes is that you want to create the stacks and give them that organic quality. You really want those those prints to move back and forth. If they were all in the exact same place, every uh -huh. time it would get monotonous, and you wouldn't have that really organic sort of. So what we're going to work at the very bottom combination and we'll meet the background to the front print, so a side seam, meet the other so that you have a tube, and here's your tube. But now, Tula, I'm going to give this to you and you're going to cut this arbitrarily right. during and the background. Right, so we and want, so we want this print piece here to move back and forth, and when I cut the tubes, I'm not measuring, I'm just and what I like to do is fold it in half and sort of finger press it to sure. give me a guideline to follow. And then using the scissors, just cut along that guideline. Mm -hmm. So here you go. I'll give you some more <laughs> that have all five of these, uh, actually there are four that have been stitched. One is a complete unit. Correct. Like lay down here. Here you go, some more. This is where the magic happens. And so by jogging these back and forth a little bit, I can get these pieces to move back and forth. If I find that they're leaning a little too much this way, I can take one of these and just flip it over sure. and move it that way. I'm going to stick that one in there. And then again, just the finger press. Mm -hmm. And then cut along that line. So really never measured so that each block will have a different amount of fabric on either side of the print. And then this one long strip, the 18 and a half inch by two and a half is just the full width. Just the full width of the block. And that gives us the most variety mm -hmm. of block sizes. And this is the same uh, configuration of sizes and they have been sewn together, but yet you can see that Tula cut these in a different location or had mm -hmm. a different arrangement. Right. And even within one block, you get a totally different look. Right. And this is what I call the recipe of the block. These are all the components mm -hmm. that make up the block. And then from here, just by moving the pieces around, we can create sure. an infinite number of blocks yeah. that all look different. But that they're still stacked with... And no, Right, and yep. no matter how you arrange these, they'll always be an 18-inch finished block. It, it, it's very clever. I, I think it's very, very unique. And then here you use 20 different fabrics that all weren't mm -hmm. from the same collection. You're a fabric designer, but right. not from one collection, but they had some of the same colorations. Mm -hmm. And you have heavily machine quilted the layers together, but you'll also notice from the full quilt that Tula didn't put borders on. Right, and this is something... Uh, device, if you will, that I use in a lot of my quilts and patterns that I write. I leave the border off because I do like it aesthetically, uh -huh, but I, I also leave the border off so that I can, you can easily expand the quilt to fit any size. Any size bed. So clever design. It may not look like it has order, but it has a lot of order and a great way of using very large prints and letting those prints showcase. Next, Tula's shattered glass quilt. Use squares or rectangles as a base and then effortlessly sew squares to the corners. It gives illusion of a fractured mirror. The look can be beautiful, but at times the look of shattered glass means bad luck, so make a quilt instead. When you see later this quilt undraped, it has a unique abstract look to it and Tula your design is clever you started just with two shapes right there's the six and a half inch square and the twelve and a half by six and a half inch rectangle so six and a half twelve and a half by six and a half and then 
multiple fabrics cut into squares and you're going to show the sizes and how to do the sewing. Right. And with our corner squares, we've cut a variety of sizes. So there's two and a half inch squares, three and a half inch squares, all the way up to five and a half inch squares. And it's just for a variety of size. And you can see here, I already have one corner mm -hmm. sewn on. And on this one, I'll sew another one on. And you're just sewing from corner to corner. And if you're willing to just go ahead and start <laughs> sewing, you can do that. Um, and that's what I will usually do is just go ahead and start sewing. Um, but you can also draw a line on the corner and each square can have as many corners, mm -hmm. as many as four, um, or you can do less and leave one corner open, which will create more open space in the final, in the finished quilt. So Tula's gonna work on stitching a couple more on the rectangle, sometimes two corners, sometimes three. The more, the fewer you have, the more open spaces there'll be in their shattered glass look. Right. And I like the, all the coordinates that Tula is using. A variety of fabrics that have different prints, different sizes prints, kind of the same basic principle of working with quilting. Yes. So assume that you've done a lot of this ma uh, basic sewing, you're just arbitrarily adding squares at the corners. And then the next step is to press. We're gonna cut, but before cutting, we're gonna press to make sure that it's square at the corner. You can kind of, Tula taught me this, you can kind of cover up some of your ears if you would like by making sure that all these edges meet. And if it doesn't, then you can maybe press in a little tuck to this area, then lift back the fabric and trim. Don't throw this away. This being the corner, you can make little half or half square triangles at a later date. But if you trim accurately, you'll trim all of these pieces. Next, you're going to just stack them, the rectangles and the squares. And we're going to show you how you can lay the design out so that it does resemble very nicely like a shattered mirror. So we'll go to the table and do that right now. Before looking at the layout of the shattered glass quilt, I think it's important to kind of point out where these rectangular or square pieces fall. They do disappear into the quilt as it's being put together. Yeah. And here approximately is a rectangular piece and then another square somewhere in there. And you can find them by the corner area where all the shattered pieces come together. Mm -hmm. It's abstract, but fun. Yeah. So when you're laying this out with the variety of rectangular and square pieces, I'll let Tula do her magic. It's like building a puzzle. And as I'm laying them out, I'm kind of looking for areas like this. We're doing the same fabric, same size. Turning them around and sort of reinterpreting where they might go. Oh, here's the other one. Oh, they go like this. I don't think there's a wrong. There really uh -uh. isn't. It's the, the key is to just make sure that you have the same rectangular block every time so that when you're sewing your rows and columns together, mm -hmm. they go together easily. And what was the foreground or the predominant fabric, which is this brown olive color, mm -hmm. really recedes right. because the, the shattered glass, you can, and you can move if you wanted to. I didn't mean to change your design, no. but you, well, that would be not such a good idea. And they can, they can move. I mean, there's an infinite uh -huh. amount of possibilities. Absolutely. Just fun. Now, when we look at the finished quilt, you'll see the quilting has also attributed to the look of shattered glass. Absolutely. Um, what we did with this quilt in particular is where it's all machine quilted, mm -hmm. and where it's quilted more heavily, it causes the batting to essentially mash down. Mm -hmm. And so where it's quilted more closely together here, the the fabric recedes, and where it's less quilt, there's less quilting here on these triangle parts, it causes it to puff out. So it gives it an almost three-dimensional effect. So shattered glass, it's a unique quilt design that again has an organized way of putting to, being put together, but right. From first glance, 
It's very contemporary. Exactly. And a great way of using a variety of fabrics with great impact. Fabric is art. Why shouldn't we hang it and frame it the way a gallery does, but in our own way? Grand Salon is the perfect quilt to showcase those little fabric gems we bought but have never been able to cut. Here's how. Well, when you look at Tula's finished quilt, it's not small, it's impressive, <laughs> and the framed art really pops out. Yeah, and this is all about the fabric, a quilt like this. It's all about zeroing in on that main motif in a, in a piece of fabric that you just love. And they can have, as you see with this masquerade print, definitely a portrait, but even just fussy cutting an element of the design to help balance the quilt. Right. Right, and it's just, it's about color. You know, a piece like this is gonna be like about really liking that piece mm -hmm, of fabric sure. or really liking that flower. And fussy cutting is what we're going to talk about now and marking your ruler. Right, and I mark my ruler. I need an eight and a half by 10 and a half inch square for the large frame. So I've marked my ruler here so that I know exactly what my parameters mm -hmm. are when I'm placing it on the fabric. And so this allows me to move it around and get a really good idea of where I need to be. Sure. And so once I zero in and I feel like that is nice and centered and exactly where I need it, I just start on one end and then I can f flip it around. Mm -hmm and line my taped edges up with that corner I just cut and cut my other two sides. And it's a really simple way of knowing that you're gonna get your fabric sure. in the right place every time. And because you can see right through that ruler, which is very, very helpful. Then there's the frame. And you choose fabrics that are, look like a frame. They're, yeah. They pop, they pop. Yeah, you want something that's really going to highlight the piece because it is all about that center piece. Mm -hmm. So you do want to choose something that's going to make it look its best. And then we have some side fabrics. Now all the dimensions are listed in, in the book that accompanies today's program. And we have a large piece. You've designed a large piece at the top and a smaller one at the bottom. Right, and this large piece is larger so that you have room to tie, to sew the ribbon down mm -hmm. without having to make the whole quilt and sew all the ribbons at the end, which would be far more difficult oh, yes. than doing it block by block. And we'll take a look at the big block. We'll show you where this big block is found in the quilt in just a few minutes. And you can see Tulis angled the corners just like you would if you were having a wire at the back of your, right. your quilt frame. And it's not a difficult quilt block to create. No, it's a really simple block. It's, it isn't any harder than, say, a log cabin. Log cabin, because you're basically putting strips around right. the side. Yeah, very good point. Let's just put this up on the quilt so that you can see where that block is. It's right there. It's a big block. And then there are, there's one more size, and that's right. to the next so, side. And there's two blocks. There's the large frame and then the two smaller frames because I wanted there to be a mm -hmm. variety because sure. it's not often that we have a wall full of picture frames all exactly the same size. <laughs> exactly. So just to give it a little bit of interest, mm -hmm. I varied the sizes of the, of the quilt frames. And then you just straight stitched the ribbon down. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the finishing touch in the, instead of a nail head is a covered, a covered button. button. I needed something to that would make sense to be holding that ribbon up. Sure. And so I needed some sort of a nail and the covered button just gave it dimension mm -hmm. and was actually nicely representative of a, of a nail on a wall. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So some of the frames have the very fussy cut areas and this just has a small print which kind of gives the eye a little relief. Right, just a little color and texture to tie them all together. So if you have some great prints that you'd like to showcase, work with Tula's Grand Salon pattern and you'll have a great design.
Reading to children is one of my very favorite pastimes. When I was made aware of a program that connects children with the love of reading and art through a traveling collection of books and matching quilts, I knew I had to share this program with you. Please welcome Julie Stevens of the Quilt Guild from Alpharetta, Georgia, who joins us via Skype. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Julie. Well, thank you, Nancy. Welcome to Alpharetta, Georgia. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you and talk to you. And I'm anxious to share the program that you have developed. So please share with our viewers how it started. Um, in 2009, a member of our guild, Janie Stokes, and the guild is Chattahoochee Evening Stars, challenged us because she had been collecting storybooks for children connected with quilting or mm -hmm. quilting stories and challenged our guild. We made 37 quilts for 37 books and pre uh, presented them at our 2010 quilt show and became Storybook Quilts, Janie's Dream. And what's the interesting thing is that you said 37 members took a book and then just using some of the images from the, the illustrations from the books, decided to make the perfect quilt. And one of the quilts behind you is the tamale quilt. Yes, uh, uh, a very beautiful quilt and tells the story um, with color and drama and lets the children, we let the children touch the quilt as the story is being read. There's another quilt that's called the uh, Grandmother Winter, and that's also, is, is that the one behind you? No, it's Old Dame Counterpane, Old Dame Counterpane, excuse me. You can see the book cover here, and then the other quilt behind you is, is that quilt. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, part of the fun of that book is, and the quilt, is that it has numbers that come off, and you can teach children to count while they're looking at the quilt. You have m many more examples of quilts and books, but I think what I want to explain, have you explain to our viewers is that it's, it's con the connection of maybe kids who have never seen the quilt process or understand that how a quilt goes together, they get to hear the story and see the quilt. Exactly, and we've gone now into libraries and to local schools and uh, the excitement and the enthusiasm of children seeing quilts that maybe have never grown up with a family member that have made quilts mm -hmm. is, is very exciting. You, you were also given a grant to, to help you with this. Yes, actually we received a grant from our quilt guild and we received a grant from the National Quilting Association to help with um, setting up websites, We've, um, all the books and all the quilts are on the website. We have uh -huh. lesson plans to help with reading the quilts and the books to teach to, to students. And the teachers have enjoyed those immensely. And we're starting to uh, determine how to travel with the quilts and get the quilts out even further than just kind of the local Georgia area. But you do, you're not satisfied with 37 quilt books and 37 quilts, I've heard. Oh, oh absolutely <laughs> not. We've challenged our guild yet again this year, and we've already prom been promised 35 to 40 more quilts, which we hope to again show to the community in our quilt show in September. It's an ambitious goal, and you have very dedicated members. Oh, we, ha we have so much creativity in our members and we have um, uh, both men and women in our guild and the art artistry is just wonderful. Well how impressive uh, and you have your quilts also will go on tra a traveling show perhaps? Oh absolutely in fact they are scheduled um, for this summer to go to the National Quilting Association's quilt show in Columbus Ohio as, as a you know, as a special to show a grant recipient. Well, Julie, thank you so much for being our guest on Sewing with Nancy, and please tell all your members, keep up the good work, and I'm impressed. These aren't little quilts, these are substantial quilts, and to go with the stories and connecting children, quilting, and many generations together. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, Nancy. 
If you would like more information on the storybook quilts, you can go to our website, nancyzeman.com, and under Nancy's Corner, all our Nancy's Corner interviews are listed there. And you can go to the Guild, the storybook quilt information, and you'll find a link to their website. Perhaps you too can make a quilt and share with someone in your community. Special thanks to Tula Pink, who is with us during this two-part series on the quilts of Tula Pink. What a wonderful, inspiring, modern look at quilting. I had such great fun. Thank you, Tula, and thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Tula Pink has written a fully illustrated book entitled Quilts from the House of Tula Pink that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $16.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2610. Order item number W1582, Quilts from the House of Tula Pink, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.